Uh, first off, we want to start by giving all praises, all honor, and all glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakurash. Yahweh being the true, holy, and powerful name of the Heavenly Father, Bahasham in, in the name. Yahweh Shai being the Heavenly Father's only begotten Son, who the Word ignorantly calls Jesus. And Rakakurash being the Holy Spirit that speaks through us so that we can divide this Word correctly and directly. And we can understand the words that the Lord has given to us. We also want to give double honor to the Prophet and other the Great Millstone. And say Shalom to the hopeful elect out there pushing this Word in truth. And it's sincerity, the striving their best to do is try in the eyes of the Lord. But uh, we was just going to get into a lesson uh, concerning a little interaction that took place after our camp on Saturday. That we had this uh, this dude come up after camp and he was just he was just going into the regular Christian thing. Just uh, going into how everybody's going to be saved, right? Every every nation can be saved, basically, right? And uh, I was just going to go on this lesson speaking about prophecy concerning those that's going to be delivered. Right, because the scriptures don't speak about everybody being delivered from uh from everywhere. Right, the Lord spe specifically narrowed it down to who's going to be delivered in these times that we're coming into. But uh, I'm gonna start with this Matthew 24. This is Matthew 24, and I start at verse 31. It says, "And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds of the earth." From the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other, right? And this is prophecy concerning the deliverance of the elect, right? This is the times that we're coming into very soon. Like the Lord's going to come and crack them clouds, right? The scriptures speak about how he's going to come with power and great glory, right? And he's going to deliver his elect from the four corners of the earth, right? The four winds, as the scriptures would say, right? But this only applies to the Israelites, right? It's not talking about all the rest of the nations on the earth. Right. Well, just to add real quick, to be of the elect, all right, you would have to be of the nation of Israel, period, man. Like it says here, I'm going to grab this, Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 4. It says, for Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, my elect. All right, so to be of the elect, right, you have to be of the nation of Israel, man. But it says, um, uh, it says, uh, Salaki, verse uh, 4, it says, for Jacob... My servant's sake in Israel, my elect, I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. All right, so just showing you who the elect is, man, of the nation of Israel. All right, and then the brother had read that precept in Matthew. All right, talks about the deliverance, right? And um, how's our deliverance going to come? It's going to come via what? Those so-called UFOs, those chariots, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to just grab this real quick, and then you got it back, bro. This is uh, Isaiah chapter 26. In verse, I'm sorry, not 20. Yeah, Isaiah 26 and verse 20. It says, come my people, enter thou into thy chambers. Right? So it's specifically talking about a group of people. It didn't say come all people. Right. All right. It says, come my people. Who's the Lord's people? Matthew 2 and 6. That's right. It's an example. Mm -hmm. hey, I'll, I'll grab it real quick for you. This is uh, Matthew chapter 2 and verse 6. It says, and thou Bethlehem in the land of Judah, as a matter of fact, I'm going to jump to chapter one and then jump over to that. This is Matthew chapter one and verse, um, uh, Matthew chapter one and verse 21. It says, and she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Yahweh Shai, for he shall save his, his people, people from their sins. So Yahweh Shai talks about the angels coming, all right, who he's going to send to save who? His people, right? The elect, right? Jumping over Matthew 2 and verse uh, 4 uh, or verse 5, it says, uh, verse 6, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not, that, art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Right. All right? You right. Got it. That makes it plain. Like the Lord's people is Israel, right? Same thing that he said when he was coming out of the land of Egypt. He's letting Pharaoh know, he's let my people go. Right, those were Israelites coming out the land of Egypt, right? The sea line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, mm -hmm. right? And that, and that Isaiah, uh, Isaiah, I, I don't forget, I forget the chapter that you brought out. 26. 26, huh? Yeah. That, it's, that's prophecy, right? So mm -hmm. when prophecy clears up all confusion about, uh, about things in the scriptures, like people saying this and saying that, but what does the prophecy say? That's right. And I'm going to finish that Isaiah 26 for you. Isaiah 26 and 20, come my people, enter thou. And to thy chambers, and those chambers are speaking about the so-called UFOs, the chariots of Israel. All right, once again, why, Elijah called it what? The chariot of Israel. 
I'm showing you that who those chariots are for. Yeah. Okay. But it says, uh, it says, and shut thy doors about thee, hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. So when the nuclear destruction is happening, all right, the Lord is going to take his people and bring them into those chariots, the so-called UFOs, man. Like the Lord said in Matthew, the 24th chapter, it says, for behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. You know, but just showing you once again that prophecy, but you got it back, bro. Uh, uh, Jeremiah 23. Mm -hmm. uh, 23. Huh. This Jeremiah chapter 23 and verse 8, it says, But the Lord, it says, But Yahweh live it. Would you can start at verse 7, Bible Kosha, just up one more time. Verse 7. Therefore, uh, verse 6, Bible Kosha. No, verse 6. It's uh, Jeremiah chapter 23 and verse 6. In his days, Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> In his days, Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely. I mean, come on now. <laughs> Judah, all right, that's speaking of the southern kingdom. Israel, the northern kingdom, you know, depending on where you're reading that through the precepts, man. But it's clear through the prophecies who this salvation is for, man. But you got it. It says, and this is his name whereby he shall be called Yahweh our righteousness. Therefore, behold, the day is come, said Yahweh, that they shall no more say, The Lord liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, mm -hmm. but Yahweh liveth, which brought up the, which, which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country and from all countries, whether I had driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land. Right, and that's simple. Right, it said that the Lord is going to deliver the seed. Right, that's who's being delivered. That's who the Lord is coming to gather. That's who that Matthew 24 was speaking about, right? The elect, right? Because us as a people, we were scattered across the four corners of the earth, right? You, you could read about that curse in Deuteronomy 28. I got that. Huh. Yeah, I can see it. This is Deuteronomy 28 and verse 64. It says, And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from, from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither nor thou, uh, neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. Yeah. You know, just lining up with the, what the brother was mentioning, because this goes back to prophecy as well. This was prophecy foretold that we would be scattered, all right, to the four four uh, four winds of the earth, all right. And but going back to that Jeremiah, it says that the Lord is going to gather us from the four winds of the uh, uh, of the heaven, all right. So the Lord is going to gather us from these different countries. You know that we have been scattered amongst you know all right but just to reiterate the point again it said but the seed is going to be mm -hmm. delivered right speaking about the seed of jacob right who got his later when he wrestled the angel had his name changed to israel right his seed was going to be delivered from the four corners of the earth right i got uh, i got another one real quick huh. uh, this is isaiah 11 and uh, verse 11 it says and it shall come to pass in that day that the lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from uh, Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush and from Elam and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather to together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. You know, just another precept showing that we're dwelling in these different lands and the Lord is going to gather us. And uh, uh, from these different lands that we've been scattered to, you know, right? Specifically saying Israel, prophecy mm -hmm. specifically concerning Israel, not no other nation. So that cuts out anything that these Christians be saying. It cuts out what that dude was saying at the camp, right? This is about Israel being delivered mm -hmm. and only Israel. Right. This um, you got more? No, nah, that's it. This uh, this Isaiah chapter ten and verse twenty, and it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel. And such as are escaped of the house of Jacob shall no more again stay upon him to smote them, but shall stay upon Yahweh, the Holy One of Israel, in truth. And it says, the remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob, unto the mighty power. Right. The remnant of Jacob. Right. The remnant of Jacob. Right. That's who's going to return to Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. Right. This is another, another prophecy concerning that deliverance. That everybody thinks is for everybody, right? All that everybody thinks is for all nations. But uh, did Jake have anything? I got one. Huh. This is uh, the book of Revelation, chapter five, and uh, 
I'm going to start at verse 9. It says, And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou was slain and has redeemed us to the Most High by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. So showing you, this is in the book of Revelation, man. This is talking about the deliverance to come. All right. And how they're rejoicing and saying that thou has redeemed us out of all these nations where we've been scattered. Right. Amen. And the next verse is going to prove to you that this is all this is already prophesied and it was concerning Israel as well. It says um, it says uh, it has redeemed us to the most high by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation and has made us unto our power kings and priests and we shall reign on earth. If your brother want to grab that in uh, Exodus 19. All right, because it was already pro uh, pro uh, prophesied, all right, that the Lord will make us a nation of kings and priests. He didn't say, I'm going to make all the nations on the earth, all right, every, everybody on earth kings and priests. No, this is speaking about a particular group of people, man. It's uh, uh, Exodus 19, I think, verse 6. Uh, it's uh, Exodus chapter 19 and verse 6. It says, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. In in holy nation, mm -hmm. these are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Right, these are the words that thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. So it was prophesied that we would be that nation of kings and priests, man. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so in the book of Revelation, when it's mentioned, we're rejoicing over the Lord fulfilling his word concerning his people Israel, man. There's no other, there ain't no wiggling around that, man. All right. But y'all bros got it. God, this is Isaiah, <clears throat> Isaiah 59 and 20. It says, and the Redeemer shall come to Zion, mm -hmm. and unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob, saith the Lord Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Right? This is the narrative throughout the whole scriptures. The Lord is dealing with Israel. Amos 3 and 1. Right? Mm -hmm. It says, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Right? So that is showing who the Lord is dealing with. That's, this is going into who the Lord is going to deliver. Right? It says, them that turn from transgressions in Jacob. Right? So you could... It's, it's all about Jacob at the end of the day. It's all about Israel. It's all about Zion. Like all those being the same thing. The seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yeah, starting with the 11. Yeah. yeah. And then we also mentioned who turned from transgression was. Well, it said that uh, <coughs> sin is the transgression of the law. Well, who the laws were given to. Right. I got it in uh, Psalms 147. 20. In verse 19, it says, He showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation, and as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord, Yahweh Shemam Shah. You know, so that's just, just more proofs that showing you who the Lord is actually dealing with. All right, he's not dealing with any other nation except for the nation of Israel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I got this in the book of uh, Romans, the ninth chapter. All right, because the apostles, they, uh, they understood this, man, and this is what they were teaching. See, right now, because everybody has a Bible, all right. Uh, and Esau's, you know, BS that he's pushed throughout the earth. Everybody thinks this is universal, man. Okay? The apostles, the disciples, everybody, it wasn't even a discussion of heathens, uh, a physical uh, heathen, all right, a physical descendant of whether it was Moab or Edom or so on and so forth were even a part of this, man. That was always clear, all right? But now, just in this day and age, that's an argument that people like to make, man. But, hey, Paul broke it down. This is Romans chapter 9. In verse uh, 3, it says, For I could wish that myself were a curse from Hamashiach, for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites. All right, so Paul himself was an Israelite of the tribe of Benjamin, going to Romans the 11th chapter, right? It says, Who are Israelites? To whom pertaineth the adoption? Right? So the Israelites pertain the adoption. You want to look it up? Yep. yep. It says, And the glory. So the Israelites pertain the glory. All right? And the covenants, so the Israelites pertain the covenants, yeah. right? And the giving of the law, the brother read the precept in Psalms, right? This all pertains unto Israel. It says, and the service of Yahweh, the, the priesthood, all right? Those that could actually serve Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shai, man, this is all given to Israel, man. It says, and the promises, once again, yeah, right? This was given uh, from Abraham down to uh uh, to Isaac and to Jacob, and then to this, then is scattered to the twelve tribes. That's right, and even the, uh, and even the precept that the brother had read in the, um, Isaiah, or Jeremiah, the twenty third chapter, said that what that he was going to gather the seed and do what and bring them into their land. See, a part of the promise was what the land being given unto a particular group of people. All right, if a brother wants to uh, hold that on deck, I believe it's Deuteronomy, uh, the thirty second chapter. It's like the last two verses, if I'm not mistaken, but um. It says, uh, I had that word adoption saved. 
kind of, kind of, I'm going to finish out this verse and you got it. It says, whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh, Yahweh Shai came. So Paul is saying right now, look, Yahweh Shai came for who? Israel, man. It says, um, who is over all the most high, Yahweh blessed forever, Aman, right? Now the brother said he got that word adoption. Yep, this is the word adoption in the blue letter. It says adoption, uh, like it says that relationship which the Most High was pleased to establish with, between Himself and the Israelites in preference to all other nations. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you can break it down. Oh, well, I mean that's, that's pretty much plain. You know, it says that the Most High uh, 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 was pleased to establish the uh, the. It's like I'm gonna, I'm gonna read it again. It says that relationship which the Most High was was pleased to establish between Himself. And the Israelites in preference to all other nations. So this just lines that lines up with that um that Psalms 147. All right, he have not dealt so with any, any other nation. So this is uh, uh uh who the Lord is actually dealing with, man. You know, says, thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. Mm -hmm. He has so he's chosen us for himself, as you paraphrase mm -hmm. it. That's yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I had mentioned uh Deuteronomy 32, it's actually uh 33. Oh. In verse uh, 28. Oh, it's um, Deuteronomy chapter 33 and verse 28. Israel then shall dwell in safety alone. The fountain of Jacob shall be upon a land of corn and wine. Also, his heaven shall drop down dew. Right. It says that Israel shall dwell in safety alone. Right. So in our land, man, they, these other nations, they ain't going to have inherited rights. Here it is. You can even change the inheritance from tribe to tribe. But then the Lord is going to turn around and pass the inheritance down into an Edomite. Now they can partake in, you know, the land. The promise was to Abraham and his seed. Mm -hmm. All right, that physical, that physical uh, uh, seed line, man. Abraham down to Isaac and down to Jacob. So a part of the promise is, is who is going to actually inherit that land, right? You can grab uh, Numbers um, uh, 23 and 9. You know, so if the Lord was to allow these heathens to partake in our promises and so on and so forth, all right, th that will make the Lord a liar, man. Because the promise was to a seed. It wasn't uh, uh, to these other nations, man. You know? Then that's just another one. That number is 23. is just another one showing you who that land is for, man, once again. Uh, it's uh, Numbers chapter 23 and verse 9. For from the top of the rocks I see him, and from the hills I behold him. Right. This is the heathen speaking. This is uh, uh, Balaam. All right? The Lord opened his eyes to, to see what was to come. All right? He even wished that himself... All right, could pretty much be an Israelite, man, because of seeing what the Lord was going to do for us and the promises down the line, man. But you got it. It says, and from the hills I behold him, though the people shall dwell alone, mm -hmm. it shall not be reckoned among the nations. So once again, where that's our, hey, that's going to be our land, and we're going to dwell alone, man. These other heathens aren't going to have rights, inherited rights in our lands, man. All right, that's plain and simple. So all these different precepts that talk about the Lord bringing us back to the land, that's not to everybody, man. All right. Showing you salvation isn't for everyone, man. Because all those different precepts talking about salvation, it's always linked with what? I'm going to bring my people into their land. All right, salvation. to fulfill the word that he gave to Abraham, passed it down to Isaac and to Jacob. But you guys got it. All right, this is Psalms 105 and verse 9 or 7. Mm -hmm. It says, he is the Lord Jehovah, our power. His judgments are in all the earth. He hath remembered his covenant forever. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations, right? This is an everlasting uh, word, right? It's never gonna, it's never uh, gonna Amen. be null and void, right? It says, which covenant he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac, mm -hmm. and confirmed the same to unto Jacob for a law, and to Israel for an everlasting covenant, yep. right? These yep. other nations were not mentioned, plain and simple. Mm -hmm. The covenants was too. Uh, the seed line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yeah, and it also said that it's everlasting, so it's so it's not going to change. You know, it's not going to open up to to uh, actual heathens. Right. You know, right. Lord say He changed not. Yeah. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. These heathens is going to be put into subjection in the kingdom. Right. That's why scriptures say in uh scriptures like Rome, uh, Revelations two twenty six, it speaks about how the Lord is going to give us power over the nations so that we rule them with a rod of iron. Right. He jumps to scriptures like Isaiah sixty. It speaks about that nation that will not serve us in the kingdom shall uh shall utterly perish, yeah. right? So how they don't they're not fitting in with with the uh with the benefits of the kingdom like the promises like the brother. So they gotta come up and learn of our ways and our right. laws, right? Because if they don't, they ain't gonna have no uh, reign <laughs> in their land. Yeah, right? and 
that season of cutting this stuff, man. Here it is. They got to come up and learn our ways, but the Israelites yeah. is going to be within them. Right. Right. All right. <laughs> they're, they're, that, that's part of that, uh, uh, the, what, the new covenant is what? Having the law, sets and commandments in our inward parts, man. That's not going to be a lot of seven nations, man. Uh, you know, just proving it with the other, the precepts that the brothers had uh, uh, just quoted, man. You know, that's only to the nation of Israel. They're going to have the new bodies. They're the ones that's not going to sin anymore, man. All right. It says we ain't even going to have to teach our, our, our neighbor to know the Lord, man. We ain't going to have to teach our people how to serve the Lord. It's going to be in them already. They're going to come out the womb. All right. Not sinning. No wickedness. All right. That's not going to be these other nations, man. And that's the spirit, too, because uh, I was thinking about how, you know, a lot of brothers been doing uh, um, videos on how how we're obsessed with prophecy, you know, and this is part of prophecy. This is why we're obsessed with prophecy, because we know that the things that come forth is beneficial for us. <laughs> you know, it's, it's going to be, we're going to have slaves in the kingdom. You know, we're going to, uh, 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 we're going to have the, uh, the riches of the Gentiles. The, yeah, the riches of the Gentiles, and, you know, uh, and ultimately, we, we're not going to commit any, uh, any more sin, you know. That's what, we're, that's what we're hoping for, man. That I, I always like to quote it, you know, the patience and the faith of the saints, man, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. If a brother uh, want to grab Acts 13 and um, 22, Bible Kasha, and then um, you have you have some Joshua? Yeah, I was going to grab a scripture you quoted earlier. Time, time. We'll hit this uh, Acts. I don't know which one you were talking about. We'll hit the Acts and then you got it. Right. Come on. This Acts chapter 13 and verse 32. 22. 22, Colossians. It's Acts chapter 13 and verse 22. And, and when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony, and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. Right, so Paul is going back through some of the history, all right, of our forefathers, you know, but go ahead. It says, we shall fulfill all my will. Mm-hmm. It says, of this man's seed had the most high, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a Savior. All right, so of this man's seed, all right, the Lord has raised unto Israel a Savior, which was promised to David in 2 Samuel, the uh, 7th chapter, right? But go ahead. Yeah, how was shy? Mm -hmm. But showing you that what? Even the apostles, they were occupied in prophecy. They were going back and proving everything according to what was written, mm -hmm. all right? And it's the same thing that we're doing now. We can go back and prove who salvation is for, just going into the prophecies, man. We we can do a whole lesson going into it without touching even the New Testament, man. All right, but this is how we know these things because it's all prophecy, man. But go ahead. It says, when John had first preached before his coming, the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. Right, the baptism and repentance to all the people of Israel. So when John was on the scene, man, he wasn't baptizing Edomites, man. Right. All right. He wasn't baptizing Moabites, okay? He was doing the baptism to who? The, uh, the Israelites, man. And that was a prelude of Yahweh Shai, man, of what he would do back, uh, uh, going, uh, moving forward with the uh, the, the baptism uh, spiritually, should I say, man. But go ahead. It says, and as John fulfilled his course, he said, whom think ye that I am? I am not he, but behold, there cometh one after me whose shoes of his feet I am not worthy to lose. Mm-hmm. Men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham. Right, so showing you this is still speaking about a specific seed line. Mm -hmm. And then you go to the word uh, stock of his uh, descendants. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Go ahead. It says, and whosoever among you feareth the most high. Right, whosoever among <laughs> you, among that seed line, among that stock that feareth the most high. Go ahead. To you is the word of this salvation sent. <laughs> so the word of salvation is only being sent to the nation of Israel, man. So if somebody's talking about <laughs> getting salvation, well, you got to be an Israelite because that word of salvation isn't sent to you. As a matter of fact, the prophecy says in the book of Isaiah, uh, how is it worded, man? Uh, he has sent a word in Jacob and lighted upon Israel. Let me uh, look it up real quick. I think it's Isaiah 9. I got it. Go ahead. Uh. This is Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 8. Yep. It says, the Lord sent a word into Jacob. <laughs> right. Going back to what the brother read in Psalms 147, this word is for who? Jacob. This word of salvation is for who? Jacob. Go ahead. And it had lighted upon Israel. Right. So, I mean, this is all for Israel, man. I mean, there ain't no way around it. This is what the Bible's been talking about the whole time. All right. The whole time, man. But you can go back to that Acts. It's a little bit more in there. It's um, back, back in Acts chapter 13 and verse 27. 
It said, for they that dwell at Jerusalem. You can read that uh, previous verse one more time. Uh, Bible verse 26. Men and brethren, children of the stock of Abraham, mm -hmm. and whosoever among you feareth Yahweh, to you is the word of this salvation sent. That's right. That's right. Go ahead. For they that dwell at Jerusalem and their rulers, because they knew him not, nor yet the voices of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath day, they have fulfilled them in condemning him. Mm -hmm. That's it. As a matter of fact, uh, jump down to verse 32, Bible Cush. Verse 32. And we declare unto you glad tidings, which is good news, mm -hmm. how that the promise which was made unto the fathers. Right, the promise that was made unto the fathers. Go ahead. So all this is going back to promises the Lord made to our forefathers, man, to Abraham, once again, to Isaac and Jacob that the brother read in Psalm 106, man. The Lord was always going to fulfill what he had already said, all right? The prophecy didn't say that the Lord was going to uh, uh, raise up the Moabites and allow them to inherit the land and Edom is going to be, no, nah, no, nah. Like the brother said, man, in Revelation, it says that we're going to rule over these other heathens, these other nations, man, but you got it. It says the Most High has fulfilled the same unto us their children. Right. So the Most High has fulfilled the same unto us, their children. So if you are not a part of their children, all right, nigga can't wake up one day like, yeah, I'm, I'm from the seed of Moab or Ham, but now I'm a, from the seed line of Judah. Now I come from one of the descendants. No, nigga, you, you just can't, all right, you just can't switch over because you feel like it or I believe now and now I'm of the seed of another, uh, of another nation, man. Now my daddy ain't my daddy no more. It's somebody else. It's some, you know, nah, bro. It don't work like that, man. All right. <laughs> you gotta be born into it. Yeah, it's, it's all set in stone. The Lord set it up. You know, like it says in Numbers one and eighteen, like the Lord set it up to uh. According to the uh, fathers. Yeah, according mm -hmm. to the fathers, right? You are who you are according to your father, right? So you can't just be uh, like the Lord just said. You can't just wake up one day and, and say, "Oh, my father is somebody else." <laughs> like, no, the Lord, the Lord already made set, set everything in stone. Right, yep. that's why that's and that's how we know that it's about the seed, right? The, the uh, according to the flesh, like that Romans nine said, right? The the seed that I was th and I was thinking that brought me back to that Jeremiah twenty three, like the seed is going to be delivered from all these different men, right? Mm -hmm. Because Luke Luke one speaks about how uh, we're going to be delivered from uh, the hands of our enemies. Let's see, we can grab that real quick huh. if we ain't, if you wasn't holding it. Oh, no, I don't got it. All right, this is uh, Luke chapter 1 and verse uh, 67. It says, And his father, Zacharias, was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, saying, so he was filled with the Holy Spirit, man. He and the Spirit are speaking right now, right? It says, Blessed be the Lord, power of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. Like, how many times are we going to read that? He's going to redeem his people. He came and redeemed his people. He's the redeemer for his people. Like, here it is. Everybody know how to read in context and everything like that when you're reading a uh, reading a book. But then when it comes down to the Bible, everybody, everybody just yeah. forgets how to. Everybody. everybody just forgets how to read once again. Like nah, the the, the Bible is very clear on who the salvation is for, right? But it says, um, and hath raised up an horn of salvation for us yep. in the house of his servant David. Yep. All right. <laughs> Link it back up with what we just read about David. Yep, that's right. That's right. It says uh, in verse 70, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. So it was always prophesied, all right, of this coming promises and save and salvation, man. All right. Even Ezra in the book of Second Ezra, he was complaining. He was like, Lord, when are we going to pretty much receive the kingdom, man? All right. That was promised unto our fathers, man. This is what we're waiting on, right? It says um, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. The oath which he swore to our father Abraham that he will grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear. All right. And that's all I really got to read on that, man. But once again, it's showing you clearly like who 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 is for like, who are those enemies? Like, who, who could those enemies be speaking about? Mm -hmm. it's, it's speaking about these different nations. Yeah. Like, it's, it's plain. Like, the Lord is dealing with Israel. The Lord is going to deliver Israel from the hand of their enemy. Right? This this is this is what this, the whole narrative of the scripture speaks about. That's right. That's right. Yeah, they got anything else?
Edifying. Lord's made this video is edifying. We want to give all praises, all honor, and all glory to you. Again, we want to give double honor to the apostle and elders of the great millstone. We want to say shalom to the whole collective out there pushing this word in truth and sincerity, striving their best to do what's right in the eyes of the Lord. Until our next one, shalom. Shalom.